Your choice of wheels and tires do impact your range in an EV. Why? Let's find out today. So as EVs become more and more popular, there's actually a lot of manufa tire manufacturers and wheel manufacturers that has popped up with the idea that it's specifically for EVs. And that does matter because both the wheels and the tires actually impact range as much as, you know, between two to all the way to 15% in range. And we'll kind of talk about why wheels matter and then also why tires matter. So let's jump right into the wheels first. The number one thing why wheels do matter is gonna be have to do with the aerodynamics. You've probably heard of drag coefficient in cars. You know, when they first designed cars, they they pretty much put it into this tunnel and then they have this like air flow through and they really see the like aerodynamics of the car. So depending on the size of the actual wheel, it will actually cause more drag. And the more drag is the less range, right? Because you're actually hitting that air curtain more, uh, which is also causing more resistance, which is also causing more energy to be used rather than less. I'm not a scientist, I'm not a, you know, a wheel expert or anything like that, but from my experience, um, I have owned a lot of Teslas and I've went from 18 inch all the way to 22 on an X. My brother had an X and he put his 21s or 22s it was phenomenal difference. I mean, he lost so much range. And even if you look at the Tesla website, if you look at, for example, the Model S Plaid, and you look at the Tempest wheel, which is a 19 inch wheels, you'll see a very different range compared to like a Plaid with um, the 21 inch wheels, right? So that's the impact that it makes. It's like seven to 10% of range difference just by the wheels and tires. And if you look at this wheel right here, this is the new Aero 19 inch for the Model 3. Uh, it is a really, really nice 19 inch wheel. Love this cap, um, but it's designed with that in mind. So they actually used Tesla's data and then they ran it and then they ran their testing against Tesla's data and tried to make a wheel that looks awesome, but also is efficient because that is a big deal. So I have this wheel, this is from a 19 inch uh, Model Y. And this is a standard wheel that you get in your configuration mostly. Uh, this was a wheel that launched with the Y and this is called a Gemini and it actually has a wheel cover. And this is supposed to actually help add range as well. So if you look at the original tire right here, I'm trying to lift it, I guess. Uh, it's, it's heavy as hell. Right over here, okay. You see this and then this just attaches to it and this is supposed to actually help with range. I believe they say like 3%, but that's still significant when you actually talk about 300 miles and then 3% of that is in the screen. They're gonna do a calculation for me. And then you could also get induction wheels. That actually looks, I think, phenomenal. It looks way better. Um, but you are gonna lose range, right? Because it is a bigger wheel. The other thing about the aerodynamic part is if you look at both of these, they're relatively flat, right? And that just causes less drag because it's flatter and it cuts through the air a lot better. Same thing with this cover. It's a lot flatter than it would be if it was just this. You can see in the back, those are for the Model 3. They're 19 inch sport wheels. That's what they're called. Um, they're actually less range because it is relatively flat, but it still causes a little bit more drag. Uh, it is also um, uh, bigger than like the 18s, for example. So the next thing that matters on a wheel is going to be the weight. And these are, this is forged, these are casted. Um, they're similar in weight. Um, but one thing that the, the new Aero did, I think, that's really, really cool, is it's not just about weight as a whole. It's actually about how close it is to the center as well. So if you have a lot more weight distri distribution on the outer wall, um, it will make a difference compared to when it's closer to the center. So they've done, we, they kept that in mind when they were uh, designing this. This isn't something that's not gonna give you like, I'm not gonna like say anything that's like, look, you get these wheels or you get an EV wheel and you're gonna get like 50%. I mean, you're really talking about like, like very, very small differences, right? Like 3% to like, like maybe five, right? Um, there's a lot of YouTube videos that did the range test with like the aero wheels or like Gemini wheels and see the differences. But uh, when you do some travel, I mean, those 3% does matter. And also it's just convenient because at the end of the day, when you have like smaller wheels, for example, um, it's gonna be a lot cheaper in your bank. Which gets me to the next point in the wheel factor is going to be the size, right? Um, the size matters a lot. When you have uh, larger wheels, you need larger tires. It gets more expensive, there's more drag there's more mass on it. So you end up spending more money, having less range, and it's just overall uh, 
the trade-off is that you look awesome and you look sick and you look like the best Model X in town or Model or Tesla in town, right? Because you have awesome wheels. Before we get into the tires and why that matters, click on that subscribe button because we are coming out with a lot more helpful content to help you with your EV journey and your Tesla journey. So let's get right into tires. So Tesla mostly uses, uh, if you look at like the, the tires they come out with, they have Pirelli's, uh, Continental Pro, Pro Contact, RX, uh, I've had Michelin Primacy, uh, Pilot Sport 4S. Um, those are the three brands that I've seen them use. Um, you know, some of them have foam construction where it's supposed to help with road noise. But a lot of uh, tire companies have actually been coming out with EV tires and they're supposed to be a lot more efficient. They claim, you know, 10% here, 11%. I'm not really sure exactly how, but like kind of like what I said earlier, it's about three to about, you know, around 10% that you're gonna see differences with wheels and tires. Uh, but it is significant. That's a lot if you think about it, right? That's like 30 miles for like a Model 3 if you're getting 10% more range. So when you first pick out a tire, um, it's going to be a little bit, um, I think, overwhelming because there's just a lot of tires out there. Um, I'd recommend this Reddit post. I think he has a website. We're going to put give it to the link to the original uh, post for the Reddit uh, where he pretty much displays all the ratings of tires that's available for Teslas, right? So you can look at that, look at what's out there, what the rating is, depending on your climate and rideability, noise, all that stuff, and they rate it. So it's really, really helpful. So before we get into why tires matter, let's just kind of dive into reading the sidewall of your tires. Um, every tire will have this. And one thing to kind of note is there are actually asymmetrical tires, which is actually on the X. And also another thing is there's a directional tire okay so if it's a directional tire we're going to get into rotation later on in the series you cannot rotate it because it can only rotate a certain direction so just keep that in mind same thing with the asymmetric tire like for example the x the back tires are different size than the front tires so you can't rotate and put the back in the front and and, and the front in the back you can't do that so just keep that in mind um, if there is a rotation a specific rotation that it wants it'll say rotation and it'll have an arrow of how it should be going and that's the only way it can go, okay? If you don't do that, it will sound weird, it'll mess it up, and it's not meant to do that, right? So the first number, 255, that's the width in millimeters. The second one is the aspect ratio, which is height over width. The third one, R stands for radial construction. That's a construction, most of it is R. 19 is the size of the wheel, uh, which is 19 inch. And then 104W, okay? So that one is actually the load index. And W stands for exotic sports car because these are massive torque and they're fast and how, how, how much you can go. MS in this standard, or in this case, is going to stand for mud and snow. So this is all season kind of tire. So now that you know, I know if you want to like impress your, your tire folks, I guess, you, you know how to read this now. I'm looking for 225, 45, R19, you know. <laughs> but, or you could go to that, um, <laughs> that, Reddit post I told you about and just find the tires of what you need. So one thing about EV tires or EV focused tires um, is that it's going to be a little bit heavier because the load index has to be a lot higher, uh, mainly because it's just freaking heavy. I mean, you look at an SX, they're like 4,000 pounds to almost 6,000 pounds, and that's pretty dang heavy for a vehicle. So that's going to be a little bit heavier, but more importantly is going to be the size. We kind of talked about in the wheel of why that matters. Same thing, it translates to the, the size of the tires. The, the larger the wheel, the more contact you need, the less efficient it's gonna be. It's gonna have a lot of performance because you have a lot of contact too. However, you're gonna be losing a lot of range because it's gonna be less efficient and it's gonna have a higher rolling resistance. So that's why when you go from a 19 to a 21, it's gonna be a big difference in range. Rolling resistance is pretty much the energy required to keep the tire moving and resistance can be in the form of many things it could be actually the size of the tire more contact it could even be tread so sometimes you can actually decrease the tread depth in order to create less um, resistance right it could also be weight it could be um, a lot of different things so if you have a tire that is a lower you know um, rolling resistance tire lrr tire uh, which most of them are nowadays um, it's able to actually use less energy to keep the car moving, which means that you have le more range in your car. So I'm not a tire expert by any means. So that's just my understanding of what a rolling resistance is. 
Um, but I think just to break it down without going really too deep into it, if you look at like a Plaid Model S tire, it is wide as hell, right? It is so wide because it needs all that performance to really have all of that contact with the road so you could just get 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds, right? However, you don't need that on a Model 3 that's your daily commuter. Uh, even with, you know, you get like a Primacy Michelin Primacies, like you're going to still be able to go 0 to 60 in five seconds, which is still incredibly fast. When you have bigger wheels and tire, that combo, you're gonna get way less range because it's gonna have more drag, it's gonna have a higher rolling uh, resistance, and it's gonna have more contact, but you're gonna get a lot more performance most of the time. So that's the, the benefit. The other thing is I think for certain cars like the X and the S, I'm not gonna lie, it looks better with bigger wheels. I think it looks, uh, they say the stance, but it looks a lot more aggressive stance. If that matters to you more than your range, go for it, go for those 21, 22s. But if it's your daily commuter and you travel a lot, highly recommend going with like 18s and 19s, right? Also like the fact that when you have smaller wheels, it's a lot cheaper. So like once you get into the 22 wheels and 285s and really, really wide diameters, it's gonna get really expensive. I mean, it's uh, you'll you'll pay four four fifty per wheel. Hopefully, this was helpful about wheels and tires. This is actually the first part of this series that we're gonna be doing in the next few weeks. Um, the next two videos is actually we're gonna be putting these wheels, this nineteen inch, on Marley's Model Three back there, and we're also gonna show you the process. Okay, if you got this and then you replace it with the nineteen Sport, what's that process look like in a shop, right? And lastly, the third part of the series is going to talk about maintenance and what you need to do to keep your tires. And I know you guys don't like doing maintenance, but we need to do a little bit of that. So we're going to be covering that. So please follow along this journey. Ask us any questions below. See you later.